guys, this performance tonight, uh, I thought we put it together on both sides of the basketball. I thought we defended really, really well. We had been trending in that direction. It's good to see our guys continue that, get our identity back. Uh, I thought offensively, we really complemented our defense well. I thought we really played off each other. Uh, guys were very unselfish, made each other better out there all night. And uh, it's just a good way to kind of end the season for our seniors. Happy for them. You know, it's the one game you're going to always remember. One of the games you'll always remember is senior night. And uh, even though it's a new world with, uh, you know, guys with you maybe one year or two years, it still means the same thing, you know, uh, that you're going to always remember this game. And I was happy that our, not just our seniors, but our underclassmen, everyone contributed to really help send them off the right way. There have been some tough results that haven't gone your way lately, but to win a game like this and everyone's feeling good, how important is this going into the conference tournament? Uh, of course, it's important. You know, I, you, know, I'm, you know, I believe you can build momentum in the tournament or you can build it before. I mean, I think I've seen teams do it both ways. Uh, for us, you know, we, you know, we need to understand who we are. And, uh, you know, we, we've had, you know, it's been a, you know, a trying season at times for us. You know, we've gone through a lot. But I'm a big believer, usually tough lessons are lessons learned. I think we've learned a lot of lessons through what we've gone through this season. And now we need to build upon, you know, what we did tonight going forward. And uh, there's no tomorrow. So there's no more do-overs now. There's no more opportunities. So we need to play with a desperation and to play with a hunger that's desired in order to accomplish our goal. With all that in mind, Coach, would you say that this afternoon was the most complete uh, team this group has played? And is it that kind of getting hot at the right time kind of a scenario here? Well, it's one of the more complete games we've played in a while. I mean, we've had some games where we played, you know, well together. Uh, it hadn't been, you know, as of recent. But, you know, we've had moments. And so I think our guys have all been enough good games, enough very competitive games to know what we have to do to be successful. And so now we just have to get over the hump, you know, in the tournament. And uh, it's just so us, it's just a one one game tournament, you know, you have to go in and you have to look at it that way and, and hope to move forward after that. And so it's good to have some seniors who understand that in the locker room and uh, we need to make sure our younger players understand the importance of every possession. You mentioned the tournament, I quickly got to follow up with this, then you're probably going to be a seven seed based on the win today. Um, with that in mind, based on your record, based on your seed, could you be the scariest team in the tournament? Uh, you know, I'm not certain, you know, how, how people are going to look at us. I do think you know, I know, you know, for us in our locker room, we feel that we can compete with every team, and we have competed with every team, you know, in the conference. So, you know, with that in mind, we just need to go out there with the right mindset, you know, play hard, you know, play smart and play together, and, uh, and then we see where we stand. But, but I, I like our guys' effort tonight. I thought we were leaving on a good note, but now we need to build upon that. We can't relax on this type of win. We need to carry this forward into our next game. You talked about uh, tough losses and lessons learned. Is there an overriding lesson that you think you can uh, transfer to your team based on all of the different scenarios that led to those tough losses? Absolutely. I think for us, I mean, the overriding, overriding factor is there's certain things you got to, you know, be proficient at every single night. And uh, one of them is defending and rebounding. I think when you look at the slippage that we've had on, on that side of the basketball, whether defensively giving up too many points and, or, or too many rebounds to teams' offensive putbacks, that was probably the overriding theme. I thought we improved our assist to turnover ratio as the season went on. I mean, we talked about it earlier about our assists and turnovers. I think we got better in that area, even tonight, I think, with 15 and 13. So it was more or less on the defensive end. I mean, I think when Michael Durr went down, we were holding teams to right around 60. And then when he came back, you know, he's trying to work his way back, and we're trying to get him back into our system. I think that number shot up to about 80 points a game. And so almost a 20 point difference. And so we noticed that as a staff and as a team. And we've been working, you know, on trying to get that number back down. And so even in a loss like the other night versus Temple, it's 57-55. That's more of who we are defensively. And then we just need our offense to come along like it did tonight to complement it. And we become, you know, I think a very dangerous basketball team. So that's how we're going to approach it. That's how we're talking to our players in preparation for, you know, our first game, you know, next week. What's most frustrating about the loss to Temple and the way that game ended? Uh, just, just the... Heartbreaking loss because we had been in a situation before where we take a lead really late, and then they get one possession. We have no timeouts. Then they just run the ball off the floor, get fouled to either score. And so again, like the Missouri game, they get the ball, one possession. They didn't score it, but they end up getting fouled, which means they go to the line with a chance to win the game with limited time on the clock. And that that's always tough uh, for us. And then the execution. I mean, we had our chance. I mean, all we got to do in that situation is assume it's a miss properly box out with the technique that we teach, and then we secure the game and we go into overtime, and then it'll be decided then. Uh, we, we missed the box out assignment. 
and that can cost games. I mean, you know, games come down to one possession, two possessions. Those plays are huge. And so we foul, which gives them a chance to win the game, and then we miss a box out. And these are two plays at the end that separated us. And so we need to learn. But what we'll learn from those, some of these guys have never been in that position before. I don't care age. I don't care, you know, they older or younger. It just It's not the age. It's have you been in those situations before. And so the guys have not really been in it, understood exactly what they should do. We had no more timeouts at that time, so I couldn't stop it and call timeout to get, you know, to reiterate some of those points that, that we would reiterate at a timeout because I, I was out of timeouts. And, uh, and it's just an unfortunate way to go down. But, you know, I'm not – Temple played – Temple, they played a good game. I'm not knocking what they did. I thought they did a good job. And they were deserving of winning. That's why they made the last play. And we weren't because we didn't make the last play. I think if we look at it that way and don't make excuses for ourselves, I think we'll be better off for that. Because if you find a way to make an excuse, you'll you'll use it. And so I'm not, as you know, I'm not an excuse making guy. We, you know, I take my losses. I'm the one I'll take blame, not my guys. I have no issues with that. Like I said, I've been I've been blessed to do this game all my life. I'll take that, you know, and and we'll get better, and I'll get better for those guys in those situations. And that's true. I know it's been kind of an up and down year for Darius Johnson with his injuries. He missed a few games. I, he probably wasn't 100 percent when he came back. How do you think he did today? Because it seemed like he was. I thought this was. Just, I thought this was a, a really good bounce back game for him. I mean, he's had a tough time as a sophomore point guard who's been in and out most of the season. I mean, he has a lot. Right, you know, he has a lot of responsibility at that position, especially for us with our team with a lot of new personnel. He has a huge responsibility. I got to make sure Taylor gets off. I got to make sure these older fifth year senior and senior guards get off. I got to make sure Derwin, he's in touch of the basketball. So he has a lot. So when he's the last five games, for instance, I look at him, I'm like, getting in the paint, but not really getting to the free throw line. He's an 88, 90% free throw shooter. So we talked about that, about being aggressive, getting in there, getting fouled or finishing. And it was good to see him today get back to who he is. You know, he, he had a great floor game of balancing out, making sure they touched the ball and got their looks, but also picking his spots. I think he, he, had, he had leaned so far to the other side where he forgot about himself. I mean, he was a you know, double-digit scorer. You know, he was averaging double digits for us most of this year. If you look at the last five games, you're like, okay, what's, what's happened? And he's had some tough games. I mean, the Memphis game, tough situation that he's put in. Come back with the Cincinnati game, tough situation against veteran guards, older players, older teams. And, uh, you know, any person could be a little knocked back given that circumstance. And uh, we tried to keep teaching and keep you know pushing them through it. But these are young men. These, these aren't 25, 26-year-old NBA players. They're college student athletes. And so, you know, he had to go through that process, and we had to go through it with him. But it's good to see us come out of that process on the other side now where he's able to bounce back and have a game where, okay, this is who you are. You play to your strength. He didn't make one jump shot. Still had 10 points and was 5'8 from the field. But no jumpers, really. And we know he can make open shots, too. So. So it was good to see. I think that's a good, good for our team. It's good for them to get a feel for who he is and who he's been. So now going forward, that helps us. Coach, what are some uh, different things that, you know, seeing a team for the third time in the season going into the tournament, um, advantages, disadvantages can speak to that a little bit? Well, I mean, it's, uh, I, I guess I don't look at it as, as a, it's not an advantage, <laughs> that, you know, because you know, we all going to know each other very well in this conference at this stage. You know, there's going to be no real secrets. There's not going to be any kind of something really new that's going to knock you back. Everybody has their system and they play the whole conference schedule. So we'll know who they are. They'll know us very well. It's going to come down to, you know, who wants it the most and just overall execution. Like just, you know, who can out execute you for 40 minutes on both sides of the basketball. That's what it always comes down to at this time of the year. And, and uh, you know, like I said, there's no do over. So everyone's going to lay it all out there. No one will be pacing themselves, that's for sure. You don't think that. During the season, a lot of the tight losses seem to be some mental lapses down the stretch. Going into a do-or-die situation like you're talking about, do you, knowing your team, do you think that's going to help push them over the edge to concentrate harder? It seemed like they did it today, being the last game of the, the home game. But do you feel like knowing your team like you do, do you think that's going to help? No, absolutely. That's what I was saying about t you know tough lessons are usually the ones you learned. And we've had a lot of tough lessons this season. I think we'll learn from those. I think being in those situations, we've seen a lot of different scenarios at end of game now, a lot. Because not every situation has been the same. It's been sometimes the defensive stop we needed. Sometimes it's the free throw box out we needed. Sometimes it's, you know, the last stop of the game we've needed. You know, it's been different scenarios. And so, but the more you see them, the more we can watch film and teach from them, the more our guys will absorb that and they'll learn from it. And I think, I think they have. I look at, 
you know, some of the things we've shored up defensively, <clears throat> so they're growing. And so now it's a point of, you know, point of emphasis for us going into the tournament to make sure, as you just mentioned, that our focus, our concentration is there, you know, to make sure we close the game out the way we need to close it out. I want to go back to this last road trip. You went from Tulsa to Philly. You were there for several days. What led to the decision to be there for as long as you were? Uh, I wasn't. Th that decision was made because of the, the conflict and travel. There was no way for us to get out from Wichita, I mean, from uh, Tulsa to back home and then to Philly because we couldn't leave after the game. We had to stay overnight. There were no early flights out the next morning, Monday morning. So we wouldn't get back until a late flight on Monday night. So we wouldn't get into super late on Monday. So that kind of kills you for Tuesday. <laughs> and then Wednesday, we got to leave and turn around and go right to Philly. And so we were like, you know, if we have to do that, it may just be better just to go straight to Philadelphia because it, there's no easy travel. We could have got out Sunday, absolutely. You know, they had a bad storm there, tornadoes. Uh, also, just with the normal flights, there were no flights back to Orlando except later in the afternoon, evening for, you know, Orlando from, from Tulsa. So it just put us in a tough way. So we had to make that decision. And that's why we ended up staying there an extra day or so because it was just really travel. Is that part of the difficulty when maybe the budget's not there to charter every game to and from that you have to make hard decisions on no, absolutely. when to fly commercial and when you can afford to fly charter? Exactly. We were in a position where it was a commercial flight, and so that's what we had to do. And so it made more sense just to do that and because, uh, you know, we'd, we'd have beat our guys up trying to get to and from, you know, just to get them there for half a day almost or a night, and then they got to fly right back out. So that, that's why that decision was made. But, it, but, you know, that's part of it. That's just part of understanding how to maximize your guys and help maximize what we're trying to do out there. So I thought it was fine. I thought our guys were prepared. I thought it was a good basketball game. They're a good team. I mean, they're good. they have talent, and uh, like a lot of teams in our league. And I thought we were right there at the end. We had our chances, you know, up by one with eight seconds to go in the game. But, you know, got to get a stop and got to get a rebound. Taylor Hendricks had a career-high 25 points. And can you speak about his growth this season? Uh, you know, Taylor, you know, Taylor's grown. I mean, it's fun watching a young player, you know, a talented young player like him continue to get better. You know, I thought as the season started off, he really emerged. And then as we first started conference play, I thought he kind of, he had to adjust to it. You know, conference play is different, as we all know in here. I mean, and so I thought, you know, it took him probably going through that first half of conference play to get a feel for everybody and, and what he could do out there. And I think you look at his second half of conference play, I thought he was he's been outstanding. He's uh really elevated his game everywhere. I mean, today he has 25 and 10. I mean, and he's, he's been playing really at a high level, and he's getting better. I mean, I'm watching him get better throughout the season, just understanding our concepts defensively, getting better offensively, you know, understanding how to, you know, be a little more aggressive when he receives the basketball and not just kind of settling and deferring to the, you know, older players. He's really starting to grow up and understand that, you know, he's a focal point of what we're doing, and he needs to establish that by how, he, how assertive he is out there on the floor. And he's done that. What's he like to coach? You know, I've really enjoyed coaching him. You know, he's, I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting young man. Like, you know, you know, I'm, you know, I coach all, you know, we're going to coach hard and we're going to push our guys because we're trying to help them maximize who they can be and maximize our team. He's never once shrugged his shoulders at anything I've ever said and tried to push and try to get him, you know, go on or do something. He's always been, you know, you know, yes, sir, coach, no, sir, coach. And he goes and tries to do it. I mean, he's a very thoughtful guy. You know, and, and it's beautiful because he's, you know, when you're that talented, you know, you love to see a guy be that coachable. He is that talented and he's that coachable, which is a rare combination. And, you know, the way I was saying to someone the other day, like we had a, we had a meal in this, you know, buffet style and, you know, players all, you know, you know, you know guys don't get their plate and they're going to go through the line. But you go through the line and you're just grabbing things and you're grabbing things and you look at your plate and it's like, oh man, I ain't got space for this or I didn't do this. Uh, Taylor just sits back kind of like where you are, Trace, and just looking. It's like at the table, looking at the table. And I'm watching him kind of look at the table. I'm looking at him. So because we went up there, he knew exactly what and how much he was getting down the line. So he looked at his place like perfect. I'm like, man, this kid, is he unreal? <laughs> you know, just a, you know, just a unique individual in that regard. I mean, that was something. He just stood back, kind of with you, kind of stared at everything. I'm just kind of off the side watching. And he went through, it was like, <laughs> done. And everything was like he won it. So, so his attention to detail is very high. He's a very conscientious young man. And uh, like I said, I've been fortunate to coach him. You know, I'm glad I had a chance to, and our staff has had a chance to coach him. And I, I think, you know, we've helped him, and, you know, I think he's done a really good job for his team.
Coach, it being senior night, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask about C.J. Kelly and his performance tonight. Um, he comes out, you know, delivers what he does, but in particular, seven points in a minute and also accruing a thousand point. From your perspective, how fun was that to watch on the sideline? You know, it's a lot of fun to watch, and I was very proud of him because, uh, you know, I think he had a good carryover from the Temple game. I thought he really did a really good job and made some plays for us to help, you know, down the stretch of that game to help, you know, give us a chance. And uh, I thought he just carried that over tonight. Uh, being senior night, a lot of times you worry because seniors are under a lot of stress. You know, there's a little bit of a lot of emotions and butterflies about this is this is really it now. And uh, I thought he did a great job of fighting out of that, especially in the second half when he made that run. Uh, he's a really good basketball player. You know, I've enjoyed coaching him as well. Uh, you know, he's 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 not just a scorer; he can facilitate. He makes plays for you on the defensive end, and so he's you know he's been really good for this team. You know. And, He's battled some things this year, you know. Like I said, to his credit, he's battled things, and he's he remained out there. But you know, he was a shell of himself for about three weeks because of that. And we was not like we're gonna tell the opposing team why would we do that? But we knew he was very limited. But he just fought through it and kept playing and giving us what he had. So I'm glad to see him be rewarded with a thousand point. That's that's rare. How many players get a chance to they score a thousand points in their college career? And uh, and he did on a night like tonight where he had to make some huge plays. I thought they had gotten some momentum in the second half. I think the seven quick points in a minute for him, it kind of stymied their momentum and kind of really, you know, gave us the opportunity to kind of just continue to play the way we wanted to play throughout the rest of the game. So where do you think this team is now as it heads to the conference tournament? Uh, I think, I think, I think, I think we have a good mindset. I really do. I, I thought even before this game we had a good mindset. We just need to get over the hump. I mean, I, I think I have been saying that when we're going to, you know, step up and make a play to get us over the hump, whether it's a defensive play or offensive play. And I thought we, we did a combination of that tonight, you know. And so, you know, like I said, I've been always, a, you know, you've heard me. I've been a cup, you know, a, you know, I'm always optimistic about, you know, my team anyway. And I'm really optimistic about this team. You know, I think, you know, I'm a cup half, I'm a cup, you know, half full guy, not a cup half empty guy. And so I believe in our guys. I think they still believe in themselves that we wouldn't have been in the games we were in. I mean, think about a year. You can go back through years. How many teams have you seen play, play 30 games and really – I don't think we lost a game by more than really four possessions, maybe. Four, maybe five, maybe that was 11, was 13 was maybe the highest game we lost. I think it was South Florida at South Florida. I mean, two games over, you know, lose by double digits, everything else was in single digits. I mean, these guys have been right there. So they know they're capable of winning games and winning big games. We just have to do it. And so this, I think, was a good step going forward. We win a good game at home before we leave for the tournament. We know we're capable. We just have to go out there and make it happen. And uh, that's the best way to be. I mean, winning the conference tournament is a heck of an accomplishment for any team. And we're going in there starting off just like every team that's going in this tournament. All of our teams are starting off in the same place now, zero and zero. And we all have to make our fortunes happen in this tournament. Taylor, obviously a big game for you. Last regular season home game. Uh, what was working well for you guys tonight, you think? Uh, really our defense, you know. Um, you know, we, we know how well we could do on offense, but, um, you know, on our uh, other stints, like, defense has been the problem, man. You know, we're getting back to that in these last couple of games. What are some of the keys to your defense playing better as of late? Uh, really just our effort, you know, um, locking in on every single possession. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, in senior night, i got to ask you to put a little shine on this. You're trailing after, I think, C.J. Kelly had already scored. I think it was about four of the seven points in that sense. Mm -hmm. You see, you know, you, you keep running up, and then he passes you the ball. Like, just take me through that play and what that moment was like. Uh, wait, when, when was that? When, 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 um, when uh, C.J. had that string of, uh, of points there that went in, and then he had an assist to you in that in that period. You running up on him, he had thrown you. The oh, ball was that when he was on the floor? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I thought he was going to pass it to whoever that was next to him, and then nobody was guarding me, so, like, you know, he just gave it right to me. So, you know, I finished the play. What do you like the most about how you're playing right now? Uh, that I'm not really getting sped up, and um, you know, I'm just playing my game, and uh, I'm playing within uh, the system that Coach has us in. I know you still got some games to play, but what's kind of been the highlight for you of your freshman year? Um, I don't really know. That's a good question. I don't really know the highlight, but I'll probably say just everything. You know, um, UCF is everything I hoped it would be. And uh, I'm just really happy to be here, being coached by Coach Dawkins and everything, too. You mentioned getting coached by jo uh, uh, Coach Dawkins. You know, coming in from your first game, you have a full season of experience. Take us through how much improvement you think that's had for your game just that time. I mean, I think I've improved in literally all, pretty much every area of my game. You know, uh, Coach Dawkins put me in positions to handle the ball a little bit more. 
um, you know, positions to shoot, uh, to score, and uh, he's really helped me develop for sure. How different do you feel now than from the beginning of the season? Uh, I feel like I feel like I'm a sophomore, like I'm a little seasoned, but uh, you know, the job's not done, so you know, I'm still gonna be trying to um, do my best. So Taylor, I think you know, obviously nationally, you're recognized as a great shot blocker and three point shooter. You've made improvements throughout the year. What do you think is next for your development? Uh, really just get my ball handling right. Um, you know, Coach Doc has been helping me with that. But, uh, you know, it's just uh, me putting the conscious effort into working on that too. This has kind of been a tough month or so for the team, but you win tonight, you're going to the tournament. What, how's the team feeling? I mean, I know you guys feel like you're better than maybe your record's been in the last month or so. Oh, yeah, definitely. You know, um, you know this game ending off and uh, leading us to the tournament, you know, uh, it really helps us defensively because, like I said, like our last couple of games, we've been doing really well defensively. So if we take that in the tournament, we're going to be just fine. Do you think you're the scariest team on the, in the tournament based on your record? Oh, yeah, for sure. Because I know a lot of people doubt us because of where we are right now, seeding wise, and the games we've dropped. But, you know, that's just the record. Right now, it's 0 0. So, you know. When you have the tough losses that you've had, what, what do you take from them? What can you learn from those moments? Uh, just that we need a. Before that, we need to be better on defense because our offense was there. You know, we have great guys offensively, but uh, sometimes like our defense is a little off, uh, and that's just because of the players. That's really not because of the coaches. It's because uh, you know we just gotta make a mental effort to just stay locked in, and so we've Taylor, been doing that the last couple of games. Taylor, how would you explain you know your leadership styles? Because you're talking a lot on the defensive end of the floor. It's one of the things that stood out to me most mm -hmm. about this game. What are you telling your teammates, and is that an active role that you're? that you've been seeking to have with this team? Oh, yeah, definitely. I've been trying to work on my talking a lot. But, uh, like, mainly I try to lead by example on and off the court. And because, um, you know, I'm a freshman, so maybe, you know, guys might look at the older guys. So I'm just going to do what I got to do, like, um, on and off the court by example. Okay. Taylor, just a quick hard-hitting question for me. Who does the headband better, you or Michael Durr? I'm going to give it to Michael Durr. <laughs> he looks really good in the headband. So, But it, it's not that far off. What's your relationship like? Obviously, senior night. What's your relationship like with the seniors? How much have they helped you with your? Man, I, I like those guys a lot. So, um, you know, it's sad to see them go. Um, I'm definitely gonna remember this season for forever, and I'm just happy we could get the win for them. What do you hope carries over from this game now into uh, this conference tournament? Definitely our defense. You know, when we play our right defense, our brand of basketball defensively, uh, we're a very scary and very tough team to beat for sure. Would you say this game tonight or this afternoon would, would be a candidate for the most complete game you guys have played as a team? Um, yeah, I would say so. You know, holding them under 60 points and us scoring a lot of points with, uh, you know, us doing really well offensively. Yeah, this is definitely one of our most complete games, for sure. I have some more. Fellas, obviously, senior night. You guys playing your last game. Just kind of what are your thoughts? You know, obviously, Indy being used to be a big win that you really needed heading into, heading into the conference tournament time. Uh, I think it was a great win. Uh, we needed one, obviously. And what better time to get rolling than now with tournament play coming up? Michael Knight's been battling through injury. You know, he came back not too long ago. Would you say this was your best game since you came back from getting hurt? Uh. I'm not sure, but I'm I'm happy we won. That's that I'm not worried about me personally. I know I'm going like battling things, but I'm just trying to contribute to winning. So that's all I care about. And CJ, how did you describe that seven point stretch that helped you get to a thousand career points? It was a seven point stretch? Yeah. Seven know. points. Seven <laughs> points, two assists, one steal. Oh wow. Like in a minute. Yeah. <laughs> in a minute. Um <laughs> I can't even explain it really. I was just trying to make sure, you know, we se secured this win. You know, it was a much needed win. I kept, kind of kept forgetting it was senior night until when guys got subbed out and the crowd would start cheering. So, um, I was just, I was really just locked in. And then when I scored it, I didn't even know that was a, a thousand. I don't know. I kept getting reminded you know, throughout the game. So, she shoot the ball, shoot the ball. And I was going to just let it come to me. So, when I scored it, I was like, oh. Like, everybody was like, yeah, it's a thousand. I was just like, oh. <laughs> Finally got it. You got more basketball ahead of you, but what has it meant to you to be a part of these playoffs this season? Um, it was big. Um, playing under Johnny Dawkins, um, it's been real fun. It's been special you know, to play for him in this program. You know, I learned so much you know, from him and the coaching staff and being around the players. You know, I just learned so much. And I'm really thankful because not a lot of people can experience something like this. You know. How so. do you think your game has changed or grown? Good question. Um, playing under Coach Dawkins, um, 
It's more so the confidence that he you know, he puts in the players. You know, everyone. You know, when he speaks, it's just like you want to rally behind him, and he just gives me so much confidence. You know, I feel like I can run through a wall. So him just instilling that confidence in me to do whatever, you know, anything on the court. Um, yeah, and then he just teach me little tricks and trades, and, you know, some pro stuff he kind of teach me. You know. What about you, Mike? Uh, same thing. Mainly confidence. You know, just being confident in yourself. Uh, that's the biggest thing that I got, uh, honestly, just the confidence part. But it's been a blessing. We talked to Taylor before you guys came in. He said the biggest uh, thing in his mind for you guys to get that bigger win tonight was uh, the defense. Um, you, you had a block, uh, Mike. You had some steals there. Uh, I think five steals, uh, CJ. Like, uh, for, for what, what would you guys do to put that together um, to have such a good defensive effort uh, this afternoon? <clears throat> um, well, we just have each other's backs, really. You know, we all rotate. You know, we have our defensive principles, and we just stick to it. We feel like we kind of got away from it um, throughout the season. But now we feel like we've been getting back to it. So just having each other's backs and you know, just playing hard, and like I said, sticking to the principles and just putting, just giving it your all. You know, we have our strength is in our numbers. So we don't take rest when we're on the court. We play our hardest. And then the next man comes in and just keeps it going. You know, i got to follow up with that team. You mentioned having each other's back during that seven-point stretch. And, yes, it was for one win. And I know you don't have it, but you don't remember all of it, too. But while you're on your back, you see – Taylor running up, take me through giving him that assist in that time too. Like, what was that play like? Um, well, I, I didn't want to dive on the floor. I hope Coach Dawkins doesn't see this. Um, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't really want to dive on the floor. Um, but I, I wound up getting the ball, and I'm looking around, and they didn't they didn't jump on me shockingly. So I'm just looking around, and I just see Taylor Hendricks running down the middle like this, and I'm just like, oh, he's probably going to dunk it. <laughs> but he wants to be in the bucket, yeah. But. Yeah. CJ, I know you still got some games left, but what's been your favorite moment of this season here at UCF? Mm, probably has to be tonight now. It was um, Florida State. It probably has to be tonight now. Just being with the guys and having everybody ride around. You know, my family coming out to see me play. Being around the seniors, you know, getting a good W, you know, being around the crowd. So I, w I would say this one for sure tonight. What about you, Mike? Favorite moment thus far? Uh, I would have to say tonight. It was, I'm not going to say I was like too emotional, but it, like, it kind of like came over me, like the senior night feeling. You know, this our last time. My family being here, their family being here, and just it was just a, a new experience. It was this was my favorite one. Is it kind of bittersweet? It's not. This is this is it for you. I mean, you have no more eligibility, right? It's yeah, like, yeah, I'm done. So this uh, is done with you with college basketball. Are you excited for the future? Or what's what's next for Michael Durr? At least what's this season gonna be? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm excited. Like, I'm obviously professional basketball, but I want to take this season as far as we can take it, you know what I'm saying? Like we had, to start the season now, we had big big uh, goals for ourselves, so I'm, we're still trying to complete those goals. When you have the kind of tough losses you've had throughout the season, what can you do with that now as you get into a conference room? What, you know, what do you learn from those moments of adversity? Um, what do you learn from them? Well, you gotta learn from your mistakes. We've been in close games all year, so. I think we've grown from them. You know, a lot of new guys you know, coming together, playing new roles, and guys being in and out. So I feel like that was just a battle in itself. So coming to all these close games and, you know, not pulling all of them out and pulling some of them out. So, I mean, I feel like it's just preparing us for the playoffs. You know, our whole season has been playoffs, if you think about it. I don't think no one has been in as much close games as we have. Yeah, yeah. So Coach Dawkins has at times described it as being a bit disjointed. Season because of the absence of certain guys, has it felt like that to you? Uh, I feel like it, yeah. But you know, it's just all the great teams find a way to win, no matter what's going on. So that's been our approach, or that's what we've been trying to do. But it's been, it's definitely been weird. You know, throughout the whole season, we had someone out, like someone was always out. Now I think everyone's back, right? We don't have no injuries right now. Yeah, so everyone's back. Just trying to take it from here. So for what can the conference tournament? Championship. <laughs> is this team a championship team? Yes. We can do anything as long as no. We have each other's backs and you know, we play hard. You know, our coaches believe in us 100%. And you know, stay healthy, and we just stick to the, the game plan. I don't think you know, there's nothing we can't do. Does uh, today kind of display what can be done when you guys are all healthy, all together on the court, and sticking to that game plan? It's a glimpse.
<laughs> That's a glimpse. But playoff basketball is very um very fun. So, you know, us as leaders and having new guys around, you know, we'll be able to help them through it. But playoff basketball is fun. There's nothing like it. So, um, we're ready to, um, you know, keep proving ourselves. How would you describe how you've seen Taylor Hendricks grow from your short staff this season? <sighs> I mean, he's been a freak in nature all year. So, I mean, um, Taylor Hendricks is a, he's a great kid who's just great kid. Yeah, he's yeah. It's not much to really say, but he's a great kid who's just green and just keeps wanting to learn and get better. So, um, you can definitely see his maturity. You know, him coming more poised. He doesn't know. So in the beginning of the year, I remember he didn't get the ball. He was not trying to like you know. He was trying to get to it. Now he would just come up and be like, "Hey, let's let's do this, let's do that." You know. So, he I definitely seen his maturity. All right, all good. Thanks, guys.